AI can do this, but it's within a fixed environment. So ChatGPT is not a human. AI can recognize patterns, but it lacks that causal reasoning. Well, we the way we define free will is we wanted to cover more comments centered around the topic of free will in this podcast. <laughs> so free will relating to AI and, and humans. And yeah. That. So this first comment says the broadest definition of intelligence is the adaptability to solve problems. Generative AI does this in only one way, learns patterns from observation and continuously generates those patterns in a manner consistent with what was observed. Since they learn from human works, they therefore learn to generate patterns in a manner very similar to how humans would. It is, however, not fundamentally very intelligent, though. We, we were preparing for this podcast and we asked ChatGPT to steel man the argument <laughs> that um, humans were the ones that could be creative and, and, and use general intelligence and not AI. And this was its response. And I, 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 I want to see if you guys can, can, can <laughs> see something that, that might not seem right. This is from the, from the perspective of ChatGPT, mm-hmm. right? Human intelligence isn't just about predicting the next word or recognizing patterns. We understand context, emotions, and abstract concepts. We can imagine things we've never seen before or experiences, and we (laughs) can create entirely new ideas. Okay, so ChatGPT is not a human. Last I checked. <laughs> Last I checked, yeah. ChatGPT is not a human, <laughs> and yet it's referring to itself as a human. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like we are, we are humans, <laughs> and we can do these things, yeah. right? And I think that just shows very clearly that ChatGPT doesn't have a sense of self. Mm-hmm. Um, and more broadly, a sense of self or understanding of any of the words that it's communicating. Yeah. And that it's, it can't it's, extract it's, away from the human generated data that yeah. is ta- referring to humans as we. As, <laughs> as we, because all the data is, is, is created by humans. Yeah, well, I think that this also relates to kind of the distinction between correlation versus causation. Part of this is that, you know, AI can recognize patterns, but it lacks that causal reason. Reasoning. Um, and so I think that this is definitely the, the comment encapsulates this very well. Right. Um, all right. So the next part of this comment is, as with IQ, G-factor intelligence being only an observational measure, generative AI is also limited to observational patterns and continuation of the same as statistical probabilities. A better generator would be that which hypothesizes functional models and simulates them to test the validity against real world observations. To do this, you need analogy. Analogy is the basis of substitution problem solving as well as interestingness and humor. So I would say that, you know, the the question then is like, well, how do you actually have a, a model that can hypothesize and test against, you know, and the and simulate how that will go, right? Yeah. And, and, and AI can do this, but it's within like a fixed environment. For example, if you're training an AI to play chess, then it can hi, hypo, like test out a different strategy and see how that goes. But it's very difficult to do that in real world situations, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and especially because in chess, you can run millions of simulations but for example in the real world well you can run millions of simulations in the same environment right in the same environment of the rules of chess yeah and so for humans that's something that's also difficult for humans sometimes in the real world is like let's say i'm making a really big decision like should i move to the city or not you can't see what would happen <laughs> whether or not you moved in or, or not and how that would play out for the rest of your life, That's right? the trouble with some data sets is it's like if, if you're trying to test if, if a certain thing makes humans happier, Mm-hmm. Right. right. And you're you have this, but you have to create a very controlled environment because mm-hmm. what if it was some other thing that made the human happier? Like you're right. testing a bunch of people throughout their lives. Yeah. And there are all these different factors a, that yeah. play. And you don't have a counterfactual. Right. It's like yeah. if I tell if I ask my sister, hey, do you want to go get ice cream or 
hey, do you want to go to the mall? You know, I can't know exactly in that moment if I asked a different thing exactly what would happen because I can't test that exact moment millions of times. Yeah, (laughs) I actually had that exact problem, that exact, like, sort of, like, thought experiment. Mm -hmm. It was when I convinced the whole family to go to this little river area. Uh And it was a hot day, so we we swam in the river. Uh And you looked pretty happy. Right. But I wasn't sure. So I was wondering, like, should I do this more often? Just, like, convince the whole family (laughs) that none of them want to go as much as I do. Right. (laughs) Or, like, because I can't see the counterfactual of of how happy you are. And it's, like... That's really tough in the real world, but not really with a game like chess. Like it's compli- it's it's more complicated than just tic tac toe, but it's still a controlled environment. Yeah, yeah. So the next part of this comment is, however, what people often really want when yearning for AGI is something more human-like, something conscious and sentient that finds its own purpose. This requires free will, which is the ability to derive options, weigh them against each other, and execute the highest. Free will involves deriving options, weighing likelihood against efficacy, and executing based on desire. So what do you think of that definition of free will? Well, we the way we define free will is the ability to choose what you want. So freedom is the ability to do what you want. Like mm-hmm. maybe you want to eat a cookie, but <laughs> but um, maybe you want to you don't want to want to eat that cookie. Maybe right. if you could choose what you actually wanted, you would choose to eat an apple, right? right? Um, <laughs> and that's the ability of free will, to, to choose what you want. I think there is something to then, like, if you do know what you want, your ability to actually execute on that. Yeah. But I think the kind of probably the cornerstone of what differentiates free will from a concept like freedom or a concept like um, your uh, your effectiveness would yeah. be your the ability to kind of choose your goal function or choose what you want. Right, and and with free will, the ability to choose what you want that that isn't something that these deep learning neural networks have right Mm -hmm. um they have a set goal function Mm -hmm. and then they are using machine learning to see uh, and try out all these different these different networks Mm -hmm. to see what works the best in 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 getting to that goal yeah right one example of free will in humans that I think is just really powerful in terms of demonstrating the ability to kind of choose your goal function Uh is Socrates um because well one Socrates was like you know asking a lot of questions and yeah and of course that's that's something where he kind of was aware that there were things that he didn't know that he didn't know right and that's something that also requires the ability to imagine, right? But basically, he he did that so much that the authorities were like, hey, Socrates, you're corrupting the youth by making them think for themselves. How dare you? (laughs) Um, And then they said, What a terrible crime. I know. (laughs) Well, Well, we're going to execute you in the morning. Oh, boy. You can fl- either flee the city and then not get killed, or you can stay and then we will kill you. Um, and you would think, like, basically the m- most basic human goal function is to just not die. Yeah. Right? But Socrates overrode that base goal function and stayed in the city and then he was killed. Um, and, like, that is, like, I think a really powerful example because you would think, like, maybe humans can choose their goal function on top of like after you not know, dying. Uh, on top of not dying but like no you can sh- you can completely override all of the most basic human goal functions you can right? i mean it takes a lot of work to <laughs> to try and and cultivate that mm-hmm. like I don't know, like, I certainly, if I was in his situation, I'm too chicken to be able to do that, right? <laughs> but, but it's possible, right? Yeah, and I think the most important part of that example really is, like, he did it based off of his own values. Yeah, well, I think this is something many innovators have. Like, it's hard to actually innovate, to do something new, and a lot of the times you're not going to get validation mm-hmm. from even... Uh, the the closest of people around you, like mm-hmm. your friends and family, if you're doing something truly innovative. Um, and, okay, well, then how are you supposed to, 
how are you supposed to keep going if your goal function is to get validation? Mm-hmm. Well, you got to change your goal function. And a lot of innovators did not have that support, mm-hmm. but they kept going because they had free will.